For all the people that's been asking, create something in the Blackstone air fryer, I think I've got one for you. We all know that breakfast is extremely high on basically the top five list, right? So this is the idea. We're gonna do a hash brown breakfast casserole. I'm gonna do mine a little bit different than my wife's. Mine's gonna be a little bit more carb heavy. I love my sausage gravy. Throw down on that. We got our large skillets over here. Quick little layer of hash browns. Throw a mixture of meats of sausage and bacon. Top it with some vegetables, some scrambled eggs, and I'm gonna top mine with some gravy. You guys stay tuned. All right, with the prices being sky high on bacon, I don't know what your grocery store looks like. There was another brand. I'm not being brand specific. I'm just telling you, this was a lot cheaper because the irregular slices, okay? Since we're gonna put it on the flat top and it's really not gonna matter, it saved us almost 50% of the price. I'm just telling you. All right, so we're gonna get bacon on the flat top, sausage on the flat top, and our sauteed vegetables on the flat top. For the hash brown choice, I know I get ripped for it, but you know, each to their own. We both agreed that we like the refrigerated cons, so, oh well. And after we tested all the different kinds. And I still get told every single day how bad of a person I am because I've chose packaged refrigerated over fresh. We didn't like fresh, what does it matter? All right, we got six eggs. That's gonna fill it up nicely. A lot of people say, why don't you add something to your eggs? Typically when we do eggs only, we do not. But since we're doing a casserole, I'm gonna add a little half and half. Love little jalapeno in there. You guys ready? Yep. My air fryer is on preheating. I just had these on the flat top as well, just to kind of speed up the process. My flat top is on low. I'm just eyeballing. I've already fed my kids this morning, so we had about a half a pack of sausage left over. Right here, I basically got about two pieces of sausage, roughly, maybe one and a half. Like I said, it's just my portion of gravy. It's light on oil. You can tell there's not a lot of oil in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. And just... Just a touch of flour. That's probably maybe one tablespoon. Remember when you're cooking on the flat top and you got handles, they get hot, I'm telling you. Just burnt myself. All right, remove from heat for a second. Now, can you also use milk in your gravy or do you always typically use half and half? You can use milk. I mean, obviously I wouldn't use 1% milk. I mean, you're already making a fattening dish anyways. We always have half and half for my coffee, so typically that's what I end up using. We're just gonna let this go right here. I'm not gonna add any seasonings to the vegetables, not even black pepper, because there's so much flavor between the sausage and the bacon, especially salt. We can uh, pepper the eggs. It's gonna carry the flavor all the way through. So just don't over season your vegetables at this point. We have bacon grease and sausage grease. We got our hash browns down. I just basically, um, whoo, them things are hot. Gauge about how thick you want your hash browns. I like to start the hash browns on the griddle, so that's gonna help a long ways. I am gonna add salt and pepper to these. Just like my chorizo, I like to leave my sausages a little bit chunky. Now that we're coming up to temperature, just a touch of salt, fresh cracked pepper.
All right, my sausage is done. I'm just gonna set it to the side. If you notice, I've got three portions of the hash browns down because my daughter wants a portion of the hash browns separate. And then we'll go in here with these vegetables. They've softened up a little bit. We've got that leftover sausage grease right there. You see our gravy sticking up nicely. I'm gonna set up that off to the heat. Remember now, your gravy is not gonna to come to a full thickening power until it boils. Then when you let it cool down, it's gonna also uh, thicken up as well. So remember, you want it a little bit loose. Just take the bacon off. Uh, my wife mentioned in the video, or off camera, that she was surprised that the hash browns didn't have a lot of color on them. Well, there's really two reasons. One, there wasn't a lot of oil or fat down. That's not what I'm trying to do. And two, I don't want to overcook the hash browns, so I flipped them a lot earlier than normal. I'm not trying to create like a crispy hash brown like we got those videos. I'm just trying to cook the hash browns to get some crisp on them so they're not just like, a, like soggy and raw going into our uh, casserole dish. All right, for the eggs, I think about three eggs a person's gonna do us. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Splash a half and half, maybe about a quarter cup. Just for a little kick, we're gonna throw in some diced jalapenos. You obviously could add those to your vegetables. I kinda like it in the eggs. I don't know if it makes a difference. Now that we pulled the bacon off, I'm just gonna cut it. Now this is a thick cut. It eats more like a ham. Uh, this is not bacon dust as my life, wife likes to refer to, but it's got some chew to it. I think it's gonna be a great addition. If, you, like don't, if you don't know what bacon dust is, it's bacon that's so crispy that when you drop it on the floor, it turns to dust. <laughs> Touch of butter on the bottom. Remember these casserole dishes are hot. These are by Lodge. Uh, just by a miracle, they actually fit perfectly in the air fryers. You could also use them to make twice baked potatoes with pork barbecue, which are fantastic. Yep, getting the butter around the edges also helps those eggs from releasing from the sides when they bake. We got our air fryer on low, or about a medium low. Nice little bit of hash browns. I'm sure you want yours fully loaded. Oh yeah. Sausage. Bacon. Hit it with just a little bit of cheese. That one's ready. I'm gonna work on this one. I'm gonna do the exact same process and then we'll finish up and I'll show you how to do the gravy. Then I'm gonna top it with some of this gravy. It's gonna sink it all in the crevices, mix with the eggs and make just an absolute, mm. I'm telling you what's gonna make. Now that I got them in there, I'm just gonna warn you, when you preheat these or heat them up, they get hot. So you gotta be careful putting stuff back in there. Okay, let's see before you put it in. Let me just see. See that little lodge casserole dish right there just fits absolutely perfect. Mm. I've checked it a couple times. The cheese get, did get a little dark on me, but that's fine. 
um, it happened a lot faster than what I thought it would. So, you know, you learn as you go. So when you guys asked me, how do you like it? It was my fault. But this one, oh yeah, is exactly what I was looking for. The gravy kind of protected the eggs. It's all set up on the inside. Now listen, this thing is screaming hot. So I'm just going to keep it here. My flat top's already off to let it cool down. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to take a bite right now. So maybe it'll probably take longer to cool down than it did to cook it. So maybe seven to 10 minutes, I'm going to let it cool down. All right, guys, there you go. Now, like I said, it's been resting at least, I don't know what the temperature is outside today, 50 degrees, the wind's blowing, at least 20 minutes in these cast iron dishes and they're still piping hot. So you can see the difference. Mine's got the gravy on it. Come back, I like my hot sauce. I'll do a little bit of hot sauce. They're out of my favorite hot sauce, so I'd go with 1B instead of 1A. All right, you guys can see that we're pulling away from the cast iron. The eggs have set, see that? All right, I don't know what kind of image you wanna see. If you wanna see it, if all comes up or you just wanna see how good of a bite looks. It looks delicious. Look at all that cheese, the egg in there. The gravy is light. I know it's heavy. Trust me, I know this is heavy. But you don't get a lot of the gravy. Not as much as I thought you would. You get a lot of flavor. A lot, golly. Mm. So if you don't have the Blackstone air fryer combo, you can always yeah. make it on the griddle and bake them in the oven. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You don't even have to use a cast iron. You can use a Pyrex dish or something like that. Feed me mine. It's a big old bite. Mmm. Mmm. That's good, honey. <laughs> Try it with a gravy. See what you think. See if there's a difference. Mmm. I'll try yours. Mm -hmm. That was a big bite of mine. Mmm. <laughs> I like the gravy. It's good. It just adds another element. It's very good. That. This is good too. That's that's a super good breakfast casserole. <laughs> Sometimes breakfast casseroles are dry and mm -mm. no flavor, but those no. are really good. Hey, there you go. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Hit us up on the Griddle Group on Facebook. Make something like this. Tag us in it. Let us know what you're doing. These are awesome. This is a great, 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 great. It's one of the better breakfast dishes we've made. That's true.